Hi, good day to you, my dear reading and writing skills students. Welcome to another video tutorial for you, no, for another lesson. Okay, so without further ado, let's begin. Hi, right? so again, I'm welcoming you to reading and writing skills. This is quarter number two, and this is lesson number five already. All right, so we have here a quotation that will truly, okay, tell us about, okay, this certain lesson or particular lesson that we will be discussing today. So this is a quick reminder to everyone that you supposed to let your passion drive your profession. Because today's topic is purposeful writing for profession. Last time we talked about on purposeful writing across the discipline. Now we will be focusing on purposeful writing for profession. Here are the objectives of this lesson. Okay, it is expecting you to explain how one's purpose is a crucial consideration in academic and professional writing. The second one is for you to identify the unique features and requirements in composing professional correspondence. Lastly is for you to compose two professional correspondences. Right? These are the things that we are going to talk about today. Professional correspondence, characteristics of business letter, common types of professional correspondence components and tips, and lastly, the five most common types of business correspondence. Now, let's define what professional correspondence is. Okay, what is professional correspondence? Now, let's define first what is correspondence. It says here that is a communication by exchanging letters with someone. That's why we call it correspondence, meaning correspondence is equivalent with communication. And communication is when you exchange letters with someone. Now, when we put it okay, in the context of professional uh, field, this is what correspondence is. Exchange of information in a written format for business activities. But additionally, aside from written format, we will be talking later on about voicemail. And that's another type, okay, a professional correspondent, yet it's not in written form. Now, let's proceed with the characteristics of business letter. We have nine characteristics. Now, we have here simplicity. When we say simplicity, this should be written using very simple language like academic or standard language where everybody can easily understand what is written in the document or to, or to the paper. Next, we have conversational style. Even though when you are writing a business letter, it sounds formal, but you have to think that as if you are talking face-to-face -face, okay, to the receiver of your document or your letter. Next, we have here the clarity of your goal. Again, when we begin writing, we what we consider first our purpose. So you have to make sure that you have a very clear goal in mind before you start writing. Next, we have here our public relation. In writing the business letter, the goodwill and image of your organization, the company you belong to should be reflected in the letter. The letter carries it no, the name of the entire organization. So if you are assigned to write a certain letter, then you have to make sure, okay, that you will be doing a great job in writing it because you are carrying the name of your organization or your company. Next, we have here the you attitude. When you say you attitude, meaning, okay, you have, okay, your readers in your mind while you are writing. Your central focus are your readers, the interest of them and how you will get their attention by simply reading your letter or the document that you are submitting to them. Next, you have to be courteous here. Okay, I want to correct here the spelling of courteous. No, I totally forgot to add in you. It's C-O-U-R-T-E-O-U-S, courteous. Okay, here you have to remind yourself, okay, that when you are writing a letter, it should always, okay, contains positive message only. Okay, do not deliver a okay, negative message without using okay, positive phrasing. Okay, so courtesy, politeness, respectfulness should be present. That's why we what choose simple language. Okay, so carefully choose your words. Next, we have here sincere. 
Okay? It's, sincerity should be there. It has to have that feel of sincerity of the writer in the letter. This is done by using words, which, of course, shows your genuine concern to your readers. Next, it should be coherent. There are different ideas that you will be presenting. Okay? You as a writer, you should supposed to link them okay, smoothly. Okay? So that's why it should be coherent. So you need to use transitional devices. And lastly, we have here concise. Always remember KIS is keep it short and simple. Even though it is short, even though it is brief and that's concise, it should not. Okay, sacrifice the completeness of the letter and the completeness of your thoughts. Now, let's proceed with our common types of professional correspondence. We have here your resume, application for college admission, application for employment, and some other various forms. Now, let's talk first about the resume. It's a brief summary of your personal, professional experiences, skills, and education history, and its main purpose is to show off, okay, your best self, Okay, to potential employers. This one serves as your marketing tool in order for you to land a good job. This one's supposed to show okay, your qualification, achievements, and education. Okay, so this one will help the employer to decide whether they're going to admit you okay, in their company. Now, let's talk about the components of a resume. So these are the components of the resume. We have your contact information. Of course, this one should include your name, your address, your telephone or cell phone number, and then your email. Next, we have objective statement. This is the part wherein you will include what's your goal okay, in applying. Is it to land a good job, a good position, to share knowledge, to share your skills to that certain company. Next, we have here your employment history. So they know what you did in the past, in your previous work, and what are the notable things you did there that you can do now on this new job that you are applying for. But of course, if you don't have past work experiences, then you don't have to add that one up in your resume. Your resume, one good thing about it is that you don't have to provide all of these 10 components. Those only of what you have. Then that's what you can share. Okay? So it reflects okay, what you have in your life. It's the outline of your life, the blueprint okay, of you applying. This is where they can see that. Right? Next, we have here your education. You begin first from the current. Uh, down to the earliest or the latest down to the earliest. So you begin, let's say, for example, senior high school, junior high school, elementary. Let's say bachelor's degree, senior high school, junior high school, and then elementary. Next, we have here your skills. What are the things that you can do? Okay, things that you can contribute to the company. Are you computer literate? Are you English fluent? Okay, can you write both in Filipino and English, let's say you you know other language aside from English and Filipino. So you have to add that one there. If you can prove it, you are good in designing, then you should add. That's your skills. Next, what are the trainings that you attend to? Seminars, webinars, trainings to hone your skills. Next, we have here your organizations or groups that you belong to. Like, for example... If you are a teacher like me, of course, you have some organization that uh, private school teachers or let's say public school teachers are all part of that certain organization. It's a good thing about you because they will know okay, your background. Your organization is together with your face, no? together with your personality, together with your appearance. So that's a good thing. Next, we have here your professional license and your certificate. Okay, Are you a graduate of vocational technical courses from TESTA? Let's say you have certificates for that. You attend research trainings, also webinars, then you have to include that. Or if you are a certified proofreader, then you have to uh, specify it here. And of course, your professional license when you pass 
okay, a certain or particular board exam. Here, we have your honors and awards, of course, your achievements. And lastly, we have your references and signature. Character references are people who will support and strengthen, okay, these things included in your resume. This one could be your workmate, previous workmate, previous boss, previous mentor, okay, because they know your strengths and weaknesses and companies will call them that's why we call it character reference and of course your distinct sign and that is signature right and we have here three functions of a resume it informs the employers of the skills that you can bring to the company it shows how qualified you are for the job it functions as a persuasive document for them to hire you right now Let's talk about the four types of resume. We have reverse chronological, functional, combined format, and targeted. Now, we have reverse chronological and functional. In reverse chronological, your work history, your educational background is listed in order according to the dates. Begin with the most current, latest, down to the earliest, and most and many companies requires or prefers reverse chronological. Next, we have here functional. Here in functional, it consolidates the skill responsibilities by describing them in a general way under headings that represent different areas of expertise instead of job titles. So if you can see on the examples, your position, your personal experiences, your education is not the main focus. It starts with your skills okay and your expertise next we have here the combined format and targeted combined format both has the features of reverse chronological and functional type okay this one is being straight forward so you will apply the functional one but with okay, the feature of arrangement of the dates Lastly, we have here the targeted. This one focuses on your summary of qualifications or your objective, your career objectives that you want to achieve. And here, you also list capabilities that matches that qualifications and objective. Okay? Next, let's proceed with application for college admission. This letter is sent to the university that you want. Okay, to study at or you want to be admitted to. You are trying to convince them or the board, the directors, teachers of that certain college that you should be accepted to study at that university. Some of you might be thinking, why do you have to do this? If, for example, you pass okay, the entrance examination or you can pay the tuition fee of that certain school. Of course, the school wants to know, okay, what are the other things that you can do your exam alone cannot prove and cannot explain okay your integrity your characteristics your attitude your skills and expertise that's why they conduct okay or they require you to submit admission letter and then you will proceed with interview they want to make sure that you will have a good contribution to this school and that you won't okay tarnish the reputation of a certain school okay Next, we have here application for employment. This is what we call cover letter. This one should be uploaded or submitted together with your resume. That's why we literally call it cover letter. So if they say this is your resume and then this is your cover letter. When you submit it through email, it should be hand in hand. They should be always together. In your resume, it only outlines your qualifications. You don't have space to explain all of those qualifications. And that's what cover letter do. It allows you to explain your qualifications and why you will be selected for an interview and eventually got or land the job that you want. Right? Now, let's talk about the other four various forms of office correspondence. We have business letter, business email business memo and business voicemail business letter and business email are the same okay they typically include critical problems that the organization is you know desperately okay wants to give solution there are many ways to write a business message and one of those is the business email this one is again a type of business letter that it's not written 
Okay? In a piece of paper or printed in a piece of paper. But this one is electronic. Okay? Because this one gives us an immediate transfer of a message from one individual, one company to another person or other company. Now, we have business memo or business memorandum. This one is announcement. Okay? Being related to management, to its employees or stops. Okay? Meaning this one needs urgent attention. That's why we call it business memo. Lastly, we have the business voicemail. So as it's not written, it's not sent uh, via email, but it's a business voicemail, which is calls. Okay? Made between the company's management to the employees, employees to employees, employees to boss, employees and stops to other stops of other company. So these are the examples. Okay? Next, let's talk lastly on the five most common types of business correspondence. Let's begin with internal correspondence. These are written communication between the employees, units, departments, and branches of the same organization. That's why we call it internal correspondence. Let's say, for example, marketing department to sales department. That's internal. Same company. Okay? But it has the exact opposite the external correspondence so it takes place between one company and another company one organization to another organization next we have here the sales correspondence this one refers to sales related communication okay and aside from that it's not limited to just selling a product or giving service okay but this one includes other activities that all relates to Sales, like for example, we have marketing letters, offers, deals, discount letters, sales proposal, invoice, statement of accounts, sales report, order confirmation, purchase order, letters of authorization, collection letters, and many more. So long as it relates to sales. And not all businesses, not all field has this certain sales correspondence. Okay. Lastly, uh, second to the last, I mean, we have personalized correspondence. This one involves personal and emotional factors. Despite being labeled as personalized, personalized, the type of correspondence can also be used for business purposes. Let's say, for example, you want to express your uh, gratitude to your boss for allowing you okay, to work okay, at for your, uh, let's say, work from home setup at the time of pandemic and you feel like you're very grateful about it, then you will write a letter of gratitude. And it's still formal. It's still inside the business. So it's personalized. Next, we have the later letter of favors and requests. If you want to take a leave, you want to rest for quite some days, then, that, of course, that's what includes your personal, okay, emotion, no personal factors. We have notes appreciation letters letters of congratulations letters of commendation and lastly your business memo is under this okay and what we call circulars circulars are notices that are communicated to a large number of people within the organization it is also referred to as office instructions or announcement often general as uh, announcements such as changes of um company's number, contact information, certain details about meaning, uh, meetings that you will have, and instruction for certain protocol, standard operating procedure, meaning from the highest or higher up position down to the last okay, employee. Everyone should receive this. Everything should be communicated through this circulars. Now, all of the examples of the resume, college admission letter, and cover letter will be down on the description um, of this video. I hope you will click that link and view it. Okay, so you can see the sample. So it has its definition of the parts also. Again, thank you so much for your time, for listening, and stopping by here on my with you. All right. God bless everyone. If any question, you can communicate with me through my email. And please do like and subscribe on my YouTube channel, Empower by Pao. Again, God bless everyone and have a good day.